carry it. Oh my gosh, y'all. It's the final episode. It's the final episode of Soleil City Podcast. I cannot believe it. Listen, I'm excited. I'm excited. Let me adjust my mic. And of course, you know, we gonna give our grace period as always. Our little five minute grace period. And let's get some people in here. Y'all, it's mm. Mm. it's the final episode. All right. Oh, honey, it's going to be a busy week. It's been a busy week anyway. I'm trying to get some people up in here, y'all. Give me one second. I don't got nothing to say, y'all. I'm just excited. All right. We got two minutes. Period. Period. You know I had to come through. I had to come through for the final episode. Let me see. I feel like I'm forgetting somebody. I probably am. I don't know. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Y'all, I don't know. Hmm. I'm ready. I'm so ready. Oh my gosh. A lot of people busy, but we still gonna get time. We still gonna get time in this beach. Gonna get time in this beach. All right, one minute, fashionably late, two minutes. All right. All right, y'all. Oh, my God. It's the final episode. I'm so excited, y'all. So, so excited to be here. This has been an experience as always. Y'all know 
I always like to do an open discussion where we talk about whatever, whoever, whenever. And thank you guys for tuning in. So welcome to Soul Lake City Podcast, the final episode of the season. Period. Y'all, let me see. And of course, definitely gotta like thank my soul. I did it, guys. Another ep- another season, let me say. I'm so excited. Definitely ready to get started. So we have a couple questions. We have a lot of questions. Don't mind me if I pick up the wrong phone because y'all know I got two phones. One for the thugs. One for- let me ki- I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Let's see. I think it's this phone. Because I want to get it started. Like, yep. I want to get it started. I am excited. I hope you guys had a wonderful week as did I, especially yesterday. It was great. Like, I'm starting to get cake orders again, and people have been blowing me up about these cakes, guys. It was to the point that I made a groom and a bride personal cake, and... They shared half with everybody that was there, and they took half home. What me and my dude saw was there was half on the table of their own for them to take home. She called and said, girl, they done stole her her personal cake and her husband's personal cake. They done took the other half, y'all. Them people stole them people motherfucking cake. Man. It's crazy, but I definitely love the love. I've been getting text message about my cake. I've been getting calls saying everything's good. Everything was great with my cake. And a lot of people don't eat cake. There was this one lady, I noticed her. She tried to play me. She was like, "Mm, I'm not a cake eater. I don't like cake. And a lot of people, I don't like chocolate cake like that, but the cake I make is, it was like a chocolate Oreo buttercream cake so it was really good and rich this lady was like yeah i don't eat cake i don't i don't do cake why in like the next five minutes this sis is slicing the whole side of the cake i was like you fat bitch you fat bitch (laughs) y'all it was funny one girl was like, I don't eat chocolate cake, but this is good. I was like, you try this chocolate one? She was like, that one's in my car. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, no. <laughs> I do not want to talk about food as a topic. Mm-mm. Y'all are kind of going to get that in my next season because y'all know I'm launching um my business. So... Most of my time for my next season, you are you might see me in the kitchen. I might be doing a little interview with someone in my kitchen. So there's that. Definitely going to bring that to the podcast. But let's go ahead and start, y'all, because I'm excited. Um, There was one thing that I did not do. Excuse me for one second, y'all. I am ghetto. I am ghetto. Let me go ahead and share this link to everybody. At least they'll see it on Facebook. Because I've been so bad at sharing. Do it with a nice apron. I'm not wearing no chef's hat. (laughs) I'm going to get my apron done, though, definitely. (laughs) I have all of that in the works. And, you know, I'm upgrading all of this for my next season. So it's going to take a little bit. I don't say what did it like I said before, it took me like six months to launch doing season two. I'll say it'll take about half of that. Cause y'all know with me moving and trying to get everything together and settling, it's gonna take about two to three months and trying to upgrade this beauty and getting another mic in for my guests. So period poop. Anyway, let me see. So, I wanted to start it off right, and that's what I'm going to do tonight. So, I had a couple questions that people had asked me, and I guess they wanted to know my opinion, 
you guys' opinion, maybe. Mostly mine. Soul A City Podcast, clearly. But definitely chime in if you got something to say. I ain't going to stop you. I ain't going to hold you. I'm just excited to get ready. So question one. Why are some men so against naming their child a junior? I was watching an interview and this guy said he would never. Um, I don't know why. I guess to me personally, my opinion on that is some men want their kid to be their own person. Naming them a junior is like a replica of who their father is and most of the times if their father is a ain't shit dude I would say they don't want to name him a junior because it's like I want you to be better than me son so I don't want to name you a junior and so the exact same thing I don't know I don't understand that anyway because regardless of what you name the kid that is your blood so that kid might be a little fuck turd growing up just saying I'm not even holding you but I guess the reminder and then also having his his own identity because sometimes with the government they get people mixed up like it really could be Michael George Sr. that's supposed to get arrested but instead they arrested Michael George Jr. just because they got the same name you see what I'm saying so they don't always pay attention to stuff like that so I guess that's why I mean to me that's really on a guy's perspective of why he wouldn't I didn't see I know I've seen that interview, but I didn't see the whole reason why behind it. Um, but I would figure because he wants his son to be better than him or have his own identity and not being like uh, Michael George the third and Michael George the second and the first and all that crap. So I don't know. See, Krishonda named her son a junior. She named him. I that honestly, that is the first time I've seen a woman name her child as a junior. I'm not gonna lie. The name Krishan is cute for a boy, so I guess it works. Um some people genuinely don't like their name. Very true. That is very true. Shamika Jr. right here. <laughs> I like my name, but you know neither here nor there I, I don't know I feel like maybe I don't know this is what it is I guess name your kid what you want it's just point blank period name your kid Africa for all I care Africa Junior I don't think there's nothing wrong with the name Junior I personally I, mm -mm, I don't think I want to have that reminder like especially like if somebody passes away like God forbid if my husband were to pass away now I gotta yeah, my kid is still going to be an identity of my baby father or my husband or whatever. But it's like, I don't want that reminder to call you that name and that was your father's name or whatever. I think that's too harsh, let me say. So, moving on, the next question they had for me is, guys who say they are bi, is that really a thing? Can a guy be bi? Personally, for me, <laughs> for me, I do not think a guy can be bisexual. I think a guy, because think about it this way. This, a guy comes along, he's sleeping with a woman. She has no idea that he's into men. He's been bi this whole time. He's never said it to her. So he sleeps with a man. This woman turns around and she finds out. She's like, yo, you're gay. Like, what? Like, how can you like both? You know, and the stigma has always been women can be bi, men can't. I don't, I, I feel like you're gay, you're gay. Like, women, okay, we have a set preference where we could like both. But I think it's so much more on men because it's like, Men are supposed to be like the head honcho. And you like what you like, you know what I'm saying? But if you claim to be bi, like, how is that possible? Like, you're into men, you know what I'm saying? And there are women that do not stand for that. There are some women that's like, oh, yeah, my dude is bi and I'm okay with that. Bitch, kill yourself. Because ain't no way that a man finna be in some nigga's booty and then come try to be in my coochie. Mm -mm. Sorry, that's not happening. There's just like, 
there's just set boundaries. There's many people that have boundaries. There's just certain lines you can't cross. There's certain things that you cannot and just shouldn't do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's overstepping a lot. Um, it's really hard for me to put it in words. Bye, guys. I can't do unless it's for pleasure and fun as, for a rela as far as for a relationship. No, thank you. And I have my reasons. It's one thing that I feel that I have to compete with another man, if that's the case. But a woman, knowing you like women, no, no, I can't. But that's the thing. Do they really like women, though? If you're bi, I just don't see that. Like, you'd be surprised. Some women get turned on by a bisexual men and what they do. I know because personally for me, I, here's my thing. I don't mind a guy who can, anyway, I don't mind a guy who can, you know, be all into his woman, do whatever with his woman, just his woman in the bedroom. But when you turn around and you doing stuff with a guy that you was doing with your woman in the bedroom, Minus the dick on dick. This, this, no. Mm -mm. Like, you know, there are some men that like to please their women. They like to do anal with their women. Some women are like, that's gay because then that, what's to say he won't do that to a man? But you have to understand, straight men who like to pleasure their women are going to go all out for their women. You also got to remember the different body parts. Men, straight men who love women are not going to want to look at another guy's thing. He's not going to want to put it in another guy's thing, seeing the same thing hang if he's straight and, you know, about his shit. But bi men are like, okay, I'm cool with this. I could put it in both booty holes and be totally okay. I don't know about that. I just can't. Thank you, but I'm so happy you understand this way. The way you just described it, I feel the same way with these dudes as well. If they're even thinking of wanting a woman. Yeah, like, it's, it, it goes hand in hand. Because for, for gay guys who like men, and, duh. <laughs> Don't mind that, y'all. For gay guys, y'all have y'all preference, clearly. So to find out that a guy comes along and he tells you he like men and then you find out he likes women too, you like, what the fuck? Like, you know, so it goes hand in hand. A woman's going to look the same. Like, you like men? You, I thought you was, you know, you like women. Like, what are you talking about? You talking crazy. So definitely understand. I, mm, some of these topics y'all got me touching on, like, Maybe I should ask them kind of people. I don't know. <laughs> so somebody, I can't remember who told me to ask this to the podcast. I think it was Annie. Annie said, friends who befriend your enemy or someone you don't like. What do you do in that situation? Um, that's kind of tough. Reasons why I say that is because... It depends on how far you going as far as the friendship with that person. Like, I'm not petty. I'm wrong. You know what I'm saying? And there's a limit. Like, if you're going to somebody and telling them my personal business, you know, like, you know, somebody I don't like and you just going and being like, yeah, she said this and you supposed to be my best friend or my good ass friend, whatever you want to call it. And you running my business to somebody else. That's a problem for me. Then I'll definitely have to cut you off. But if you are grown enough, and it's only so much trust I could give people, I'm um, petty, pick a side. <laughs> you're right, you're right. Um, I don't know. It just depends on the level of, like, okay, well, you said my enemy. I wouldn't like that. You, you definitely would have to pick a side. But if it's like, okay, I don't talk to that person. I really don't care for them. I don't know them. So, you know, like I met her one or two times, but she was a simp or whatever. She was lame. 
so what? Talk to them. I don't care. That's not my, my business. But, like, if it's my enemy or someone, like, I really, really don't like, like, yeah, you definitely got to pick a side. Um, and like I said, if you, if you run in my business to this person that I don't like or is my enemy, then it's definitely a problem. Don't do that. I don't think you want to make me an enemy. Some people did and I hurt their feelings. <laughs> Sorry. It's one thing if it's somebody I don't like or mess with, but a hardcore enemy that I hate. Oh, hell no, nah. Pick a bro or sis. Yeah. Definitely understand that, y'all. Uh, yeah, I could agree. Pick a side for real because I just don't have time for all of that. Because then you're going to run back here and say this. Then you're going to, you know. Mm -mm -mm. Anyway. I think I'm going to leave. I don't know if I want to touch on this or not. Okay. Number four just says, bitter baby mamas and bitter baby fathers. <sighs> Man, I can say so much about this topic because I have not seen it from both ends. I've seen bitter baby mothers. I've seen bitter baby fathers. And it's crazy when it's really a bitter baby father because I'd be like, nigga, like, I, w I don't even say nigga. I'm like, bitch, like, you really pussified. Like, you you crying? Like, <laughs> I done seen better baby fathers, y'all. Like, and it's crazy because what was once hidden in the masculinity of men is now so feminine. These niggas are so in their feelings. They be so... <laughs> They are emotional, yes. These guys are so emotional over these women. Like, bitter baby fathers, I don't even think it should even be a thing. Because at some point, I'm going to just sit there like this. Wow, this nigga's really a bitch. <laughs> if that's where my mind goes, for real, y'all. Like, bitter baby fathers should not be a thing. Because it's like, I'm going to definitely ask you, like, is it that time of the month? Because why is you on your period, sis? Like, we might as well just go out for coffee and talk about how you feeling. Because why? I, listen, it's to the point that I have my homegirl. I know she don't care about me bringing this up. I have my homegirl, her, her, her baby father, trying to be spiteful, being with some chick he don't want to be with, whatever the case is, and just doing all types of stuff, trying to make different statuses and posts, and, you know, then telling my friend to, like, leave the dudes that she talking to alone, and if she not going to do that, this, this, that, oh, wait till you see, blah, blah, blah. That's all he talk about. He try to, like, make his little threats and stuff, but it's like, okay, we get it. You ain't scaring nobody. And she definitely ain't scared of him. Like, it's just crazy. Like, he bitches and moans. He's, and he's always, you know, supposed to be about the kid. And instead of talking about the kid, he's always talking about her. Like, what are you doing? Where you at? Oh, I bet you with this nigga. She's like, um, at this point, we're supposed to, your court is, your court hearing it was said that you only supposed to be bringing up the child. So evidently, clearly, I got to block you. And I don't know. It's just so crazy. Like, bitter baby fathers is a thing. But bitter baby mamas, I mean, we hear so much about bitter baby mothers. And it's like, I don't know. You got to, I guess you got to, like, see a situation because what if it's really not the baby mother? Because people put so much emotion on women to say, oh, women are emotional creatures. But then behind closed doors and in reality, it's really the guy that's like making a whole big ordeal. But yes, there are better baby mothers. There's been situations where I've seen spiteful baby mom is just like, yeah, I don't want my kid going over there if he got a girl over there and blah, blah, blah. To me, there's a rule. If your baby father been dating this woman for X, Y amount of months, maybe I'll say six at best, because, you know, he gonna want to see his kid. Um, and it depends, like, you know, if he's living with a female or not, whatever the case is. We need more alphas. We do. We definitely do, because we don't have them. Um, but if you know, at a certain
certain point, I say at best six months, you're going to definitely have to make that guy see his kid. You know what I'm saying? Like, just because you bitter over the fact that things didn't work out. And you know what would be the crazy thing? Sometimes baby mothers and baby fathers, they don't be together for like a cool set year or whatever the case is. And then when a lady mosey on into this man's life, all of a sudden she hurt. She trying to do spiteful stuff. But within that year, she was all buddy, buddy. He could see his kids, whatever he want. But as soon as a lady come into his life a year down the road or whatever, she's like, uh-uh, you ain't finna bring no bitch around my kid. Blah, 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 X, Y, Z, blee, blee, blee. Bitch, get over yourself. You've been on about 10 dicks in a year and you telling this man... It's inevitable. You know, you're going to have to at some point trust the fact. And I be hating them baby mothers, even the baby fathers, that that basically just be trying to do spiteful stuff for the fact that they don't want the child around the, babe, the, the new girlfriend. And But she got her own boyfriend and she like, well, you know, my kid could be around my boyfriend. This, this, that. That shit don't make sense to me. Like, so what if your your boyfriend is just a fuck nigga and do all types of shit to your kid? You know what I'm saying? Like, and you don't even know it. But you ready to call out the next female because you so worried about the next female, you're not even paying attention to what's going on in your own household. You see what I'm saying? Like, and there's no point for that. Like, and I feel like if you notice that a woman is still sticking around, treating your child good, even on the guy's end, be respectful. Because at some point, y'all going to have to get together for this child. At some point, that child's going to gain a bond with this person. Like, y'all just got to... I don't know what to tell y'all sometimes. Can y'all be stressing me? Like, stressing me. To the point that under this wig is gray heels. Like, y'all know the same mind, so whatever. Immaturity when it comes to these scenarios, they're always immature on both on one or both ends. Yeah, like it's such a it's such a viral topic. Like what like like he said, um Ty said, one of the most popular controversial topics of the world. And it's true because you're never not gonna have a bitter baby mother and a bitter baby father. Let me check something. Anyway, that's just my take on it. I just feel like I can't change the world, but but the fact that these exist is like it's so immature. You know, we getting older and then it gets selfish. It's selfish. There's no way you could think, okay, well, I'ma have this guy around my kid or I'ma have this girl around my kid, but they can't have nobody around my kid. You know what I'm saying? Like that doesn't make sense. That definitely doesn't make sense. I know you're not going to be able to see what's going on with your kid when both parents are no longer together. But it's like, you just got to trust the situation. I mean, who are you to say what this is going to be, what it will turn out to be for this other person? It's just a lot. Anyway... Number five says, do you give too much of yourself to others and not get anything back? I'm sorry, hold on. Let me see what this says. They need to learn to co-parent better. And the major problem is that they always lose focus on the one important factor, which is the child who is going to end up suffering. Facts, 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 facts. That's the main thing that is the set priority in that situation regardless of however the mother or the father may feel you have to know how the child is feeling if the child comes and says to you well i like this person they were nice to me this this that and it's not even just like one or two times it's like a constant thing hey this person took me out we went to um get some toys or whatever understand that this world is sick so when you do actually find some people that love your child, respect them. You don't got to be buddy-buddy friends with them, but respect them. Sometimes respect goes in a way of saying, hey, thanks for taking care of my kid or thanks for being around. 
or hey my child wears this this that if you want to get whatever i've seen some baby mothers and the girlfriend you know be cool and have no problems because it's just like they know that situation would never work with the baby father it was just like a, a hit or miss situation and it so happened a kid came out of it but anyway do you give too much of yourself to others and not get anything back this for me i feel like is a it depends because well i won't say i give myself um most of the time i'm giving myself more so in my relationships and of course clearly a lot of relationships haven't worked out um there was a point in time in my relationship where i was giving so much and i wasn't getting anything back i was fed up i left i left um we've had our history of things and i didn't love him anymore like i no i loved him through the hurt or whatever it was a point where i grew out of love with him i was just like i do not love you no more and he tried his damnness and i'm like you know what like let's try it let's let's see because this world is getting so scary and i'm not saying hold on to anybody because of the scare of the world but for me it's like it's getting so scary there are people who are really out there that will hurt your kids just because you leave them they're gonna hurt your kids but i know this person so you know what i'm saying like I know what he's capable of. I know what he would do for his child. I know what he would do for me. I know if I were to leave, he would not try to hurt me or harm me. So, you know, um, but there are some that have been in situations like that. They die because they try to leave a situation and, you know, anyway. But do I give too much of myself and not get anything back? Sometimes I'm not even wanting anything back. Sometimes I'm doing things out of the kindness of my heart. So really, to me, that just depends. Like, I mean, I guess I could say in certain situations, like, you know, I give to people and the only thing that I want back is really something free. Like, for instance, supporting my podcast. Just jump on here for an hour, support my podcast, an hour and a half, whatever the case may be. Some sort of support. But when I'm giving myself completely, I'm always doing stuff for you or you asking for stuff and I have no problem doing it in the simplest of things you can't do, then yeah. In certain situations, then yes, I'm giving too much of myself. But there are some times where I'm just not looking for anything back because it's like, I did this out of the kindness of my heart. Um, so, from yeah, that, that definitely depends. Um, there was a point where I was given so much of me. And I was like, yeah, this is not it. This is ghetto. I'm about to dip kind of scenario. So, uh, set boundaries were necessary. That's definitely true because... You don't want to give too much of yourself and you're just open and available and people are just draining you of your energy or just eating you alive and you don't even know it until whatever situation pops up and you're like, I don't have no more to give because I didn't gave it all to this person. I didn't gave all this. And it doesn't even always have to be in the physical sense. Like you give so much of your emotional stability or your mentality to others and you're not taking the time to work on yourself. So all of that gets distracted. It's like, when do you take the time to self-care for you, basically? And some people are like, oh, I've never been through that. You have. You just don't know it yet because you really haven't hit that fan. Some people are able to give more than others. Some people are able to give more advice than others um, before they actually crack or they never had their breaking point as yet. Even till this day, no matter what your age is, there's there's people out here that don't mind giving advice, doing therapy and all that stuff. And they may have not hit their breaking point. They may have at some point and they got the time to rejuvenate themselves and get back to it. So it just all depends. This is funny. When y'all arguing and he makes sense. What do you do next? 
<laughs> Find more shit. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> when, he, when we arguing and he makes sense, I'm like, about time. I'm still going to talk my shit. About time you make some fucking sense because all the shit you say just sounds stupid. Like, that's just me in my head. <laughs> when he makes sense, I just be like, yeah, okay. You got it. Ain't nothing else to be said. Sometimes there's no point. You know, like, like why, why sit there and go back and forth? Why sit there and argue? Once you hit me with a fact, oh, I don't got nothing to say. You got it. But when you sit here talking all your opinions and shit and don't know shit, yeah, arguing is so draining. I don't mind having a debate. And people are like, what is a debate? It's the same thing as arguing. Yes, but you argue with facts. You argue with maturity. You're not arguing with opinion when it comes to debates. Like, you ever seen in school where the teacher tell you, okay, you got to go up here, you go over here to your podium, debate, whatever. And then they come out with the facts and ain't nobody finna go throw hands and fight and be like, yo, I fucking hate you at the end of it. No, they shake hands and they be like, great debate. When all the facts get thrown out, it's not just based off of opinions. You know what I'm saying? So... I hate arguing. Like, there's no point of arguing if you're not coming with facts. And me, I'm, I I done studied so much shit, y'all. I done, even when I was studying the arts, I was still studying law shit. I was doing all types of stuff because there was a point where I wanted to be in law. My mom's a nurse. So my mom taught me a lot of stuff that she does in her field. So when people come and argue with me about certain stuff, I just be like, bro, like, all right, you got it, because at this point, you you know everything. You know what I'm saying? And the only person that really knows everything is God. Like, he knows what tomorrow is going to be. Like, who who want to argue with that? If somebody knows what's going to happen tomorrow, I'm not going to argue with God. Like, no. <laughs> Kick that emotion out the door. Yeah, because a lot of times arguing stems from people's emotions and... Once again, I'm not even trying to be an ass when I say it usually comes from guys. Like nowadays, it comes from the guys. They're just, they're just so argumentative nowadays. And it's like, you don't understand that you're arguing right now. You're starting to get emotional. You're starting to change your tone up. You're starting to do all this kind of, you know, things that you know that you normally wouldn't do if you were just having a regular conversation or a regular disagreement. When niggas start to get in their feels, they pitch change. And I call it the bitch pitch. They got the bitch pitch at this point. Well, you if you don't shut your ass up, wasn't you just, oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Why are you talking like that? Because you and your feels about a disagreement. That's what it is. It's a disagreement. We could disagree to agree or agree to disagree. It don't ever got to be no arguing. Like, I don't get that. But not everybody has a common sense, open mind, or mentality to have healthy debates. That's so true. And that's why a lot of things in this world is happening the way it is. A guy go out and he disagree with a nigga or he argue with a nigga about a bitch. And next thing, pow, pow. What you kill the man for? Because he was telling you the fact of the woman. Like, I don't mean understanding that shit. Niggas be in their feels about everything nowadays. A bitch pee the wrong way, he and his feelings. A bitch have her period on the day that she's supposed to have it. Every day of the month, he on, he in his feelings. And he gonna argue, why your period came early? Why it came early? We can't control that nigga. Shut your dumb ass up. Like, I'll be like, yo, y'all argue about the most fucking corniest shit. Like, and it most of the times, it be about shit that women already know. And it's not even to take away from smart men, but when a guy gets with a woman, most of the times the guy is there to work. The woman knows everything. She handles the bills. She's jotting down what bills need to be paid. The guy just hand the money over to the female and it gets done. But if you coming in arguing with me about shit that I already know, that I already put down on the paper, or I already researched as facts, nigga, we got a problem. Lower your bitch pitch. Lower the bitch pitch, okay? Period. <laughs> Like, I'm getting so upset about this topic because I can't tell you how many times that I've heard guys argue. Like, it don't even just got to be my situation. 
I see friends who go through that shit and the guy just be calling a female out her name. Oh, you's a bitch. You know that. This Nigga. When you start doing that? When you start talking to females like that? Like, that's the shit that kills me. And then these guys who sit there and say, oh, yeah, I love my mama. I respect my mama. Honestly, I do not ever say that when i when they talk about oh a guy who love his mom or respect his mom will not disrespect a female yes the fuck they will because for one but we're not their mama we're just not and any guy who sits there and like yeah i want a girl that's just like my mama you should have slept with your motherfucking mama you nasty bitch lower your bitch pitch so i'm gonna say anyway have you ever um no i haven't heard guys fight over 2k i've actually had a guy fighting with himself playing 2k <laughs> or even madden like he would literally sit there and he would play the game and if he would lose let me tell you this was one of the fuck niggas i was dealing with okay i'm gonna be honest with you this nigga broke maybe about four or five controllers off of all of my money. Why my dumb ass kept buying it? I don't know. I guess because I wanted to play the game too when he broke every last fucking controller. That's why. I was like, if I had known the term bitch pitch then that I just made up, I would have told him lower your bitch pitch. I should have made him buy the shit back, but he ain't had no job. So I don't know when that was going to happen. But anyway... Shit, there was times I was like, let me just buy a fake ass controller that's not a PS1 because this shit costs money and you breaking every last one. Ooh, nigga. Mm. We used to argue with the game and I used to be like, who is he talking to? Like, did he sniff something prior to? Y'all. Don't stress me. Do not stress me on this podcast, y'all. Do not stress me, okay? <laughs> Those kinds of niggas, I would never understand why you breaking your controllers. You wasted your money at that point. You wasted my motherfucking money, and my dumb ass went with the shit. Like, like I said, I just don't like arguing. I think it's so unhealthy. Yes, in relationships, you're going to go through battles. You're going to go through those moments. But it should never be called an argument. I don't do arguments. I feel like at some point, I'm going to just shut up because I'm, I'd be like, okay, you know everything. You researched it all. And honestly, I'm not trying to float my boat or toot my own horn. But there's just a lot of things that I know. There's a lot of things that I've studied. And people might be like, oh, you probably studied it. No, I used to sit in the library, y'all, and research and study certain stuff after school because I just didn't want to go home yet. So I used to just go to the library and read, whether it has stuff to do with law or, you know, just self-taught shit. I just sat there and I read. And I'm like, there's always loopholes and cracks to shit. And people just be sitting here going off it. People think they know everything. And that's the problem. I'm not saying I know everything. I definitely don't, but I know what I studied. And if you get at me with that topic, I'm going to be like, yeah, all right, okay. Because it's just, it's just being ways. Sometimes I'm going I'm to just start saying to people, okay, Google it. Okay, Google it. Because it, it'd be so stupid just arguing with people about shit that I already know. Because it's, it, it's a lose-lose. Because they're going to go off of their opinion, even though you know the fact. They're going to go off of their opinion and argue you down. And the people with the opinions are the fucking loudest. Let me tell you. They are the loudest. And if I have a straight up fact, what am I arguing with you for? I don't need, I'm, I already said what I fucking said. I said what I said. And if you feel some type of way, that's because you're mad because you came with a fucking opinion. That's, that's it. That's what it is. Huh. Hmm. I had to drink. That shit done ran up my blood pressure, y'all. Did I say thank y'all for tuning in? <laughs> All right. Next question. Do men stick with a female while she's trying to better herself or vice versa? Y'all be asking me some shit that I feel like y'all should be asking other people. <sighs> anyway. Does a man do it? I don't know. 
you have to ask a man that's probably been in that situation. Do females do it? We do it more often than we should. Let me say I have. I've done it a lot of times. Um, I could say maybe there was only one guy that really stuck with me through my shit while I got myself together. But I ended up calling it off with him. Um, but I want to say years down the road, he was still very accepting of me. We tried to date again, but it just, mm -mm. it just didn't happen that way. But yeah, a lot of times women are more so sticking it out for the men while they try to better themselves versus being there for the woman. I haven't honestly seen that often. Um, I don't know why. And then, you know, because women are emotionally un um, available and we're like the nurturers. You know, the thing that I can't understand a lot of times is men are like they want an independent woman. Um, but she has to be dependable in ways. And I guess I understand that statement. You know, you as a guy, you're wanting your woman to depend on you and need you. But you don't want her to be too dependent to the point that she doesn't need you. Like, she's doing her own shit. She could fix a dress or a draw without you. Um, and that's supposed to be a man's job. I hate that stigma of what is supposed to be a man's job versus a woman's job. Because bitches is climbing up on cranes and shit in high as fuck just as these guys now. Um, men are cooking in kitchens. That they once used to say women, that's their, a woman's job. She's to clean and cook. Fuck, men do that shit now. Like, I hate that stigma because in reality, we're all human. We're made to do things of this world, to keep us alive, to learn to survive. You know what I'm saying? If you were a single man right now, you would have to get up and feed your ass. I'm sure there's guys that probably could afford restaurants every day, but there are men out there who actually love to cook. Cooking for me is therapeutic as a woman. There's some guy chefs out there that would say the same. They love cooking. They love seeing the, fa the smile on people's faces when they cook their food and they love it because it just does something for them. It's like, you know, I see a lot of chefs in the kitchen or a lot of cooks that are men so to hear that there's this stigma that, oh, women are supposed to be in the kitchen, it's so dumbfounding to me. The only thing that's different between men and women is the fucking thing between your legs. Like, come on. I hate that shit. And there's no argument with that because when people say that shit to me, I just be like, you're so one-track minded and so not about this world because... A man who really loves his woman would get in the kitchen one day and just be like, I want to cook for my baby. If he knows how to cook, I don't even give a fuck if you don't know how to cook. Try some shit. Fucking cook hot dog water for all I give a fuck. Boil some water. I don't give a damn. Like, I just think it's so close-minded to say that this is a woman's job and this is a man's job. Like, there's women and men in the field of taking care of of women and men in a hospital. You see what I'm saying? Like that shit just, it baffles me because it's like, if I could take the laundry and fold and do the clothes, you could fucking do the same. You have hands, you have all that shit you got. The only difference is I cannot fuck no bitch because, like you do because I don't have a dick. And you can't do what I could do on a dick because you ain't a woman. You know what I'm saying? Like. Ugh, guys, y'all shouldn't have asked some questions, them two questions back to back, because I'm going a, I'm to a spice it up. I'm going to get a little bit irritated here. I'm kind of annoyed. <laughs> uh, yeah, boil some water. Do some shit. Like, I don't even care if you don't know how to cook. Boil some fucking water and then say, babe, could you just drop the eggs in there? Or just be willing to fucking learn. Like, it's so crazy. Men and women can learn so much from each other, but Everybody's so ready to argue about what you could do or what you can't do, what you know and what you don't know. And that's the problem with people. Like, nobody's trying to overstep you if they know something that you don't. No, we actually want to teach you. We want to teach you what's right versus you going out there and thinking everything that you're doing is right when it's actually wrong. 
So to save you because I love you or if I care for you, I'm going to tell you the facts. I'm not going to give you an opinion. Why would I give you an opinion of what I feel that may be right? So I can have you arrested or whatever the case is? I don't know. I just think people look at things in a way that is so uncalled for in this world because once again, that leads back to arguing. But do men stick with a female while she's trying to better herself? I haven't seen much of it. Um, Maybe there are men that do. But speaking personally for myself, I've been through it. I've been through it with a lot of guys. I've been through it with guys who were just my friends. And I waited for them to get better. If they didn't, that was on them. You only get so much of a chance, you know what I'm saying? And more than likely, the guy friends get less of a chance than, you know, the relationships because I'm intimate with somebody at that point. It sucks because it really should be the other way or other way around because you ain't going to play with my feelings and I'm trying to hope that you change and be better and you about to sit here and play with my motherfucking feelings. Uh, uh, at my grown ass age and me getting older, I don't have time for shit like that. You, yeah, mm, we ain't even gonna go there. Anyway, so we got about four more questions here, four or five. After this one, four more. Okay. Um, the question asks, "Do you like your ass eating? What do you think about men who do?" Uh, no, I said this on my last podcast. I do not. Um, I, I appreciate the mouth where it goes, and that's not in my doodle hole, not around my doodle hole. Yes, I clean it, but I just think that's so uncomfortable. Like, I don't know. I, uh, what do I think about men who do? You're gay. Like... <laughs> It ain't no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I, yeah, no. I don't know how I, I commend you. I'm not doing that. I'm sorry. Mm-mm. I don't want my booty eating. And then you're going to come up and kiss me. Like I said, I clean down there, but I just, I don't know. That's the tutor. Like, that's the tutor. I don't want you down there with a tutor at. I understand, you know, women, we bleed, but we bleed once a month. You know, we're supposed to shit every day and fart every day. That's a norm, but we get our periods once a month. We clean out the vagina cells clean. My booty hold on self clean. I got to wipe this. <laughs> Y'all. I swear. <laughs> I can't. I'm sorry. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. One guy told me back in the day, he was like, oh, you know I ate your ass right <laughs> I said, um, I don't know if you did or not. I, I wasn't paying attention, to be honest. I thought you, thought you was in the right spot. <laughs> and man, <laughs> but I can't with me neither, friend. I can't. Oh, man. That's hilarious. Uh, anyway, yeah. Um, It's a no for me. I, I don't like it. I never will. I just don't think. Yeah, no. One second. Okay. I ain't gonna stay too much on that topic though, but that is funny. I'm gonna wipe my damn makeup off laughing. I ain't do too much makeup, so it's okay. But yeah, what do I think about men that do? You gay. I'm sorry. You like your ass eating as a man, you gay. Um, there's no, and I, man, I can't tell you how many times I done ran into certain porn videos. Yeah, I watch porn, whatever. Of the woman, as soon as the man lays back and he puts his feet up in the air or he bends over, boy, if I tell you if I don't see a bitch pitch then, boy, I, I'm lying. They go to country for y'all. I am lying if I tell you I don't see the bitch pitch then. A man putting his legs up in the air to get his ass eaten or bending over for a woman to eat. 
y'all is motherfucking gay. It's just it for me. I can't. I can't. I, I at all. At, at that point, for me, the fem, the masculinity is out the window. I'm gonna just see the word masculine just turn into the word feminine. I'm gonna just see bitch. <laughs> I don't know. It's just me. <laughs> I guess Tank the singer is gay. Then I watch it too every day or every other day. You nasty. I don't do it every day. It's like seldom for me that I turn on some porn or something, but it's not an every day or every other day thing for me. Shit. Tank could be gay. I don't care what he say. Oh, it's my... I understand. Like I said, men love to please their woman any which way. But as a woman, if you put your... Listen. The only thing that I want to kiss that look like this is your lips, not your asshole, because the asshole look like that too. And there's shit coming out of that. I don't, mm -mm. But yeah. Next question. And this is a question that got asked to me um, during like a little, um, I guess it was like a survey. Um, hold on, y'all. Okay, I guess it's a survey, but um, it says, does a couple have to be married to count as a family? Why or why not? Is the presence of children a requirement for being counted as a family? So my initial answer to that was, it just depends on how people see it. It depends on people's belief because for me personally, let me say that. I would feel like to be considered a family, it would require the child. Because at the end of the day, if a woman and a man are dating or whatever kind of relationship, if a, if a woman and a man are dating and they break up, there's no kids involved, that doesn't make them family anymore. You're an ex. Versus if they have a kid together and they break up, you know, in the eyes of the child, that's still their family. They're still technically family because that's their parents, this mother and father. Who can they turn to at that point? Either mommy or daddy. Um, when the kid has events at school, mommy and daddy show up or they take family pictures together, family photos, because it's still, at the end of the day, the child's mother and father. So it would be considered family. To me, like I said, if y'all are broken up, that ain't no fucking family. Don't even think you finna go call my ma, ma after we break up. No, you're a fucking ex. You're an ex. Just stay in your place and never ask why. But um, does a couple have to be married to be counted as family? I would say so because... But there are other people who don't believe that. They'd be like, yeah, that's my family because, you know, a lot of people are already claiming who they're with as their family, just depending maybe on the longevity. You never know. Um, but I would say they would, they would have to be married to be counted as family because at that point in the government, in the eyes of the government, technically you're single. Um, technically you're single, even in, when you're in a relationship, you have to be full blown married to be considered family. So I would say that. Now, these last few questions are hilarious. So just like your credit score, does your bodies get canceled after seven years? <laughs> Listen, I done got a lot of bodies on me, so I will hope after seven years they cancel. <laughs> Listen, I don't even remember. I don't, that's bad to say. I don't even know, because as some... In my mind, honestly, like sometimes friends would really have to remind me, like, oh, you remember? Oh, shit, I did sleep with him. Yeah. Because what if they really weren't good? Like, do they count? <laughs> Y'all, I'm getting bad right now. I understand that, you know, we're going to have bodies or whatever. But. Like, do I really count the whack ones? Like, that ass. Like, yeah, we might have gave them a little thing thing then, but 
do we really count them? Like, I don't know. They should probably delete after seven years because that would clear a lot of my history. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a merger mom. Well, no, I've been with one person for six years. So technically, if that were the case, I would have only slept with, see, seven years I've been with him for six. I would only have slept with two people. Yeah, two, three, 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 mm-hmm, but I'm just saying, I don't know, I guess it depends on how you view situations, I personally, I would cancel the, the past ones, because we grown, you don't know who my, what my coochie matured out to be, so. <laughs> y'all, I ain't shit. I'm not shit. And then there's just some guys that I'm just like, you ain't qualified. Yeah, you probably got some, but it, it wasn't all that great. And it wasn't all that wet for you. So you ain't really get the full experience. So no. <laughs> I'm an asshole. Sometimes. I'm a sweetheart. Let me not say that. Mm. How do you feel when a female gives you head with a condom on? Do you stop the whole show because you are going to hit it with a condom? So my friend told me to bring this to the podcast because this guy, I guess, he got pissed off that the girl sucked his dick with a condom. And to each his own preference, I definitely understand why. Me, personally, I do not like sucking no dick with no condom. I've tried it before, and the shit is a weird. Like, it's weird. Yes, it was a flavored condom, but it's weird. And I definitely understand because it's like, what's the difference? I'm putting my mouth on your dick, and then you're putting a condom on your dick to protect yourself from my coochie. Yes, I understand babies can come from a vagina, but so can diseases. And they can also come from a mouth. So I don't see the fact that a guy is like, why is she sucking my dick with a condom? Like, I'm not going to be able to feel it. How do you feel it in the pussy? Like, I don't understand. But <clears throat> to each his own preference. And I mean, I get it because, like I said, I... Will not suck a dick with a venom, but I also know that I don't have anything. And I'll definitely have to make sure that this guy doesn't have any, anything either. So, yeah, I'll put my mouth on it. But, of course, if a guy has something, no, I'm definitely not sleeping with you. I'm not sucking your dick. I'm not doing none of that. <laughs> Go get yourself fixed. Go on now. Um. So, there's that. But I feel like to each his own, to each his own. If a guy is okay with a female sucking his dick with a condom, kudos to him for being very well kept and smart about it. Um, for females who want to suck a dick with a condom, that is your preference because it would make no sense for a guy. Honestly, it would make no sense for a guy to want to sleep with you with a condom but wants you to give him head without one. Like I said, guys' mentality is she can't get pregnant in her mouth. They're not thinking about the fact that this bitch might have some motherfucking herpes in her mouth that she is just in the back of her throat and you can't see it because it ain't around her lip. Like, niggas don't think like, like that. Like I said, they be one-track minded. They mind ain't going this way and this way and this way to think about stuff like that. That's why a lot of them fuckers come with opinions more than facts. Period. See how all of this topic shit line up? <laughs> I'm glad it did. So the last question of the night in the ending of Soleil City podcast. It is right on time, y'all. I've tried it a couple of times in the past with flavor ones on this one guy, but then I left it alone. I just left it alone. The flavor ones taste so I remember I remember just like it was yesterday. It was a strawberry one. Oh my god. I'm like, oh I like strawberries. That shit was Fucking gross. 
I mean, he nutted, so I guess. But that shit was gross. I was sick. I was like, I can't wait. I was like, I don't know if the condom tastes worse or his nut would have tasted worse. <laughs> Y'all. Oh, man. The <laughs> last question of the night. <sighs> yeah, I, I read that too. But, you know, a lot of these guys nowadays, it's, it's hard to trust people because so many people tell you they clean and a lot of people go by word of mouth when people say that. They don't pull people records and be like, yo, let me see when the last time you went to the clinic or nothing like that. And it sucks because when people are dating and free, they they could have a clean, you know, thing going on when they show you that they just went to the doctor two weeks ago. But it's so scary because you never know what people are capable of. They could be sleeping with you and then sleeping with somebody else. And then they catch something after they didn't showed you that they were, you know, they were fine after going to the doctor two weeks ago. So now they come and pass you something because you were so trusting of them and they pass you something down the line. And it's it just sucks, you know. I wish like if people were just clean, they could be clean forever. But that's not the case. Um, it really is. I'm always very cautious whenever I do anything. If I ever do, I'm very protective. You gotta be. Oh, sorry, y'all. It's my bad time. You gotta be in this day and age because there's so much stuff going around. So, I mean, that's why I say I understand when females or even males, they want to do certain things with a condom, even if it's getting head because you just don't know. It's not just about the vagina or the ass or whatever the case is, it's not just about that. It's also about the mouth. Somebody can have the beautifulest lip features ever, but if they, if the back of their throat got lumps and you can't see that, you're doomed. So just know who you sleeping with. Go together, shit. Can you be in love with more than one person? I love this question because I've answered it before. No, I don't think you can. I don't think you can be in love with two people. I think you can love as many people as you want, but to be in love is a totally different story. Like I gave the example, do you are you in love with your mother or do you love your mother? A lot of people said they love their mom. I said, okay, are you in love with your wife or... Do you love your wife? They said both. I am in love with my wife and I love her. Because to me, the depths of in love, you got to think you're in love. So there is some sort of depth to that. You're not going to be in love with your mother because that's, to me, the word in love is like a romantic thing. And then there are people who like, well, what about the men who have two wives or sleep with two women? They're still in love with one person because guess what? They got with two women for the factor that one may know how to cook, one may know how to clean. He's in love with the woman who knows how to cook because she's supplying his belly. So he has more, he, he loves the one who could clean, but that's not touching his inner desire. You know what I'm saying? So he favors one more than the other. And that's the one who's he, who he's in love with. Um, so that's why I say I, I love that question because... People always say that to me and I'm like, I just don't think that's possible. You you can love your kids. Some people are like, oh, I'm in love with my kids. Um, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'm in love with my kids. I love my kids to the life of me. Um, but I'm not in love with my kids. I feel like that's just for like a, rom a romantic thing or a romantic development. Um... And it just makes sense to me. You're not in love with your mom. You you love your mom. You love your mom dearly. Um, and it just comes off a factor of respect. I'm not going to be like, oh, I'm in love with my dad. Like, that to me, that sounds weird as fuck. But once again, people have their own beliefs to each his own on a lot of shit. I'm not saying I have all the facts. 
but to just each his own. People have their beliefs. People, you know, thrive off of whatever works for them in situations. So it is what it is. And that's period. And that on that. Y'all, it is the final episode. It is the finale. This was open discussion. I am so excited that I got to journey through this whole season with everyone who tuned in, everyone who stayed loyal to the bone as I went through this, and y'all got to see my face this whole season. I will never stop saying that because this was just an accomplishment for me. This is well enough to be celebrated. I'm so excited. <laughs> y'all, thank you so much. Definitely got to give a round of applause for that. I am coming back with season three. Season three is going to be a little bit different than what it was. You might catch me on the couch. You might actually catch me in the kitchen. You might catch me on the couch with somebody next to me because that's what we plan to do. We are going to have guest features, y'all, for season three, and I'm so excited. I already got a lineup of people that are interested. So this podcast is not going anywhere for now unless I say otherwise thank you guys thank you Ty thank you my whole audience especially Ty because Ty has sat in I promise you I feel like since episode one he sat in no matter I'm always gonna say it, he sat in no matter whatever he was doing he always showed love um and still definitely celebrating his birthday so keep celebrating your libra season thank you to my audience thank you to everybody who showed up and showed out for me i really truly appreciate it i love you guys i will keep you updated on when season three will be coming out but stay tuned for the upgrade and i'm moving i'm moving i'm moving i'm so excited thank you guys again i'm gonna miss y'all i love you guys so much Oh, let's see what y'all saying. You know, I'm always here. Thank you again for the birthday shout out. I love and appreciate this one. Thank you guys. I can't say it enough. I'm not gonna get emotional right here because I don't want to come to my table. <sighs> Screw it. Fuck y'all. No, I'm kidding. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. Season three will be hot, and I will make the announcement. Hopefully, within next month, I will make that announcement for when season three will be popping off. But you guys stay healthy, stay blessed. Come with your facts. Don't be a butt or a pussy. Don't bitch pit about anything. Get your point across without bitch pitching. Okay? Love y'all. <laughs>